Before I start with this video, I'm going to ask you one simple question. Do you know anyone who doesn't lie? Like genuinely, anyone who does not lie. Not even like once every month, someone who doesn't lie. You're probably struggling to name someone. Or you're coming up with a justification that ah, everyone lies, which is true. But what if I told you that lying, the simple act of lying, something that is so easy to do, something that we've all been doing since we were about four years old, five years old. What if I was to tell you that lying is plaguing your life? And when I say plaguing your life, I'm not exaggerating. I can promise you that if you stopped lying, your life would be so much better. Right now, you may be thinking, oh, I lied to for the betterment of others. I lied to protect some people. I lied to whatever, whatever your justification may be. I'm going to explain why that isn't true. I'm going to explain why those justifications are BS. But just bear with me. Before I start explaining, we just need to define what lying is. To lie is to intentionally mislead someone when they expect honest communication. So the first thing you may be thinking after I've said the definition of lying is what if someone asks, how are you? Do I, does it mean that I have to tell them how I am every single time? If I'm doing, because most of the time when people ask us, how are you? You say, ah, I'm all right, I'm doing well. When 90% of the time you aren't actually doing well, you're just saying that because you want to carry on. Now we have to go back to the definition. The definition is lying is to mislead someone when they expect honest communication. The truth is when you ask someone, how, like, Okay, I'll speak for myself. When I ask someone how they are, 99, okay, not 99, but like 95% of the time, I'm not really expecting honest communication. In most forms of communication, in most forms of conversation, when someone asks, how are you, it's just a means to continue the conversation. They're not ask, actually asking, how are you? You will know for sure when someone genuinely wants to know how you are because they'll probably ask you twice. They'll be like, how are you? How are you actually, like genuinely, how are you? Another thing we need to tackle connecting to the definition of lying is, let's say you mislead someone, but it wasn't intentional. Then you're not lying. It's just a case of misinformation. You just didn't know. So you're not technically lying. You just didn't know the truth and you misled them unintentionally. So now that we've covered the basis of this argument per se, I want to get into it. A thought you've probably been having right now is that uh, lying is good in extreme situations. And this is all coming from a book I've read. It's called Lying by Sam Harris. You should actually read it. It'll take you about an hour. It's like 70 pages. So in the book, he gives the examples like under a heading lies and extremists. So lies and extremists are essentially lies towards in extreme situations. The example he gave is let's say you have your house and you're hiding some young man from a murderer, someone who you know is a murderer. That murderer comes to your door and he asks you, have you seen this young man? People will think that, ah, it's okay. You can lie in situations like that. Saying, ah, I saw him running down the street. And you may think that telling that murderer that, ah, I saw him running down the street solves a problem. But the truth is, it doesn't actually solve the problem. What it does is it just passes a burden on to someone else. The problem with this is that you assume that the person that you're passing the burden onto is better equipped to deal with the situation. And the person may be, or you may not. See, you can, you can still tell the truth in situations like this. Let's say someone's asking you for information that you just don't want to give up. You can just tell them, I don't want to tell you. Or in the case of the murderer, Sam Harris used the example saying, even if I knew where he was, I wouldn't tell you. And that's the truth. He knows where he is, but he's just not going to tell him. I think a core problem with this lying thing, when you say, ah, you shouldn't lie, is that people confuse telling the truth with revealing everything. You don't have to reveal everything to tell the truth. Sometimes you can just tell them that you'd rather not say. Sometimes you can just tell them what they need to know while still being truthful. So now on to what Sam Harris calls white lies and faint praise. So white lies are essentially lies told to prevent the person you're telling the lie from feeling discomfort. So it could be when someone asks for your opinion, when it's just in a situation where lying doesn't seem very consequential. So they may be asking, do I look fat in this dress? And you may be thinking that ah, if I tell them that they don't look fat, that they look good, then I'm boosting their confidence, that I'm doing them good. 
But the problem with white lies is that you decide that you're the best judge as to how much of their reality that that person should know. And that's quite disgusting behavior, if you ask me. Because when you give people these white lies, when you tell people what you think they want to hear, right? You create a false reality for them. And now they act upon that false reality. And now imagine what can come out of that false reality. Do you not think it would be better if, let's say your friend, he asks you, am I looking fat? And you're like, I wouldn't say you're looking. Like, let's say your friend comes up to you, he asks, am I looking fat? Am I looking overweight? Do you think it would be better long term for you to say, ah, no, you're looking fine, even though you do think he's slightly overweight? Or if you just told him, I wouldn't say you're fat, but you'd be better off losing. 2 kgs, 3 kgs, something like that. Where it's like you're saying the truth in a kind way. You're not saying, yeah, you're fat. You're not saying you're obese. You're just saying uh, losing a bit of weight wouldn't be something bad. <laughs> it's just a kind of way of saying the truth. When someone asks for your opinion, you do them no good by pretending not to see flaws. Especially when they're about to find out about those flaws. Because when they do find out about their flaw, when they do find out that, hmm, I'm actually overweight. First of all, they'll feel bad that they're actually overweight. But then they'll start to question your word. They'll start to question the value of your word, whether you're telling them the truth. And that will erode the trust they have for you. And this segues perfectly into the next example of, let's say you're with a friend and another friend calls you and they ask you what you're doing and you just tell a lie because you just don't want to go to that event they're inviting you to. For the person you're with, right? They're not involved in the lie. That lie doesn't affect them whatsoever. That's what you think. But person, the person that you're with, they all start to subconsciously question whether you can lie to them like that. Whether you've done it in the past. And it may not be evidence. It may not even be significant. But their truth... <laughs> TJ! TJ! But their trust for you will slowly erode. And the more you lie in front of your friends, the more they'll start to question. How, how, is this guy actually telling me the truth? And you still may be thinking that, you know, these white lies, these lies saying, ah, you look good in that dress, or ah, it's not that bad. You may think that there's nothing wrong with them and that it does no harm. But let's say you're on the receiving end of these lies, these small little lies. I can guarantee that you would feel betrayed. Because let's say... You ask your friends, how does this outfit look? And they tell you that, ah, this outfit looks good. But deep down, they feel like, ah, you should probably change. You would be betrayed. You would probably appreciate it more if they told you the truth. They told you that, you know what, I don't really rate this outfit. You should probably change the shirt. And if you become the type of person that always tells the truth, the type of person that when someone asks for your opinion, you will give them your true opinion. It will build trust. People will value your word more. And the good thing about people valuing your word more is that when you compliment them, they will genuinely cherish that compliment because they will know for a fact that you genuinely mean it. The other day I was talking to one of my friends, Fari, it was about <laughs> a situation to do with girls, right? And he said something to me that pierced my being. He said that the guan with me, and I quote, the guan with me is that I tell half truths. Meaning that I won't lie to people. I ju I'll just omit certain details that are actually crucial to the story. And I thought to myself, do I want to be the type of person that tells half-truths? Do, do I want to be known as someone who tells half-truths? Because to me, telling a half-truth is essentially as good as lying. Because you're misleading someone. Like you're intentionally leaving out information. And that caused me to read this book. Lying by Sam Harris. And... Yeah, I don't want to be known as someone who tells half-truths. I want to be known as someone who has integrity. And you should strive for the same thing too. So in this video, I'm not talking from a point of authority saying, ah, I never lie. I'm talking from the point of view of someone who's going on the same journey as you. And the last way that lying is plaguing your life is because of all the mental accounting you have to do. Once you tell a lie, you're going to have to uphold that lie. So let's say you told your parents that ah, I'm going to my friend's house. When they ask you later, 
How was your day? What did you do? You're going to have to remember that, ah, oh, I went to my friend's house. And you're going to have to construct another story which includes lies as to how you spent your day at your friend's house. When in reality, you were out somewhere with some girl. <laughs> you know, these lies, they take up storage. Let's say your brain has like one gig of storage. It definitely has much more than that. But let's say your brain has one gig of storage. I would say that people are using five megabytes for lies. Like just keeping count of the lies they've told so that they can uphold them. But then in the act of upholding your lies, you create more and more lies. So if you have a habit of lying, that five megabytes of storage used to account for your lies will turn into 10, and will turn into 15. Then eventually half of your brain storage will just be lies. And, there, and another problem with this is it stops you from being present. Because you will never be able to just live in the moment. You'll always be thinking, hey, if this person asks me this, then I'm going to have to say that. So now, on to the most important question of this video. What would your life look like if you didn't lie? I think it's fair to assume that your life would definitely be much better if you stopped lying. Because first of all, on that mental accounting point... You won't have to keep tabs on all the lies you've made. You'll free up that five megabytes of storage. You'll be able to live presently. Like, have you ever been planning for an event or something and you are just thinking about what am I going to say? What do I have to say? For a long time, I used to do that. I am not going down a conventional path. Most of my friends have gone to uni. Most of the parents of my generation expect people to go to uni straight away so for months and months and months i'd come up with lies to tell parents what i was doing because in my head going down a different path was associated of being of it was associated with being of lower status so i didn't like telling people what i was actually doing so i'd have to tell people lies now they have to keep in my mind or keep account of the lies that i've told separate people so every time i was going out every time i was going back to my school i was just like Ish. What am I going to tell these people? No, they have to spend time remembering what I told them and constructing more things to say. And that was stopping me from being present. And when I resolved to stop lying, it's like a, a 20 kg chest plate was lifted off my chest. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's so freeing to know that I don't have to prepare for anything. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to tell anyone because I'm going to tell them the truth. So that allows me to be present. It allows me to enjoy every moment for what it is. So imagine if you could live your life not having to worry about what you have to say. Like, you know that girl that you meet, you, you won't have to worry about what you're going to say because you're going to tell her the truth. You won't have to prepare this. I'm going to go up to her and be like, hey, how's the weather? You know, it's good. It's looking as good as you. I don't know, some stupid punchline for a girl, right? Just go up, you tell her the truth. You'd be like, hey, I think you're looking cute. Why, well, thank you, cute. Or whatever, I don't know. This isn't a video I'm flirting. I wouldn't be the best person to give it. <laughs> but just knowing that you go and in every situation you tell the truth, imagine how freeing that will be. Imagine the burden that will be off your chest. Because you have to realize that when you lie, you don't solve any situation. You're just kicking the burden down the road. Imagine a burden being a Coca-Cola can. What you're doing is every time you lie, you just kick it in the direction you're walking. So you just kick it. 20 seconds later, you're back to the can. You kick it, you're back to the can. And eventually... TJ! TJ! And eventually, the more and more you kick that can, your foot starts to hurt. It starts to hurt you. And now your life is worse because of all these lies you've told. And you have to use energy each time that you have to tell another lie to keep the list of all the other lies. It hurts you more and more and more. And it's just like you're digging your own hole. So we've established that if you decided to stop lying, you would free up so much mental space. You'd be able to live in the present moment. And on top of that, you'd build more trusting friendships and relationships. Because people will know for a fact that you're telling the truth. They won't have a shadow of a doubt that, mm, is this person telling me the truth? I think the most important benefit of telling the truth is that you have more respect for yourself. Imagine right now if you could say that I do not lie. And it would genuinely be the truth. Imagine how good you'd feel about yourself if, if you could be like, I don't lie. 
Not even to my parents, not even when it suits my needs. I don't lie. Because most times we lie to avoid discomfort. But if you're watching my videos, you know that discomfort isn't a bad thing. Discomfort leads to growth. Imagine if you could truly say that I don't lie. I am a man of integrity and you won't be lying. And then the last thing, which is relating to the first question I asked you in this video. So how many people do you know that don't lie? If you become one of those people who doesn't lie, you'll be high value. Because I made this mistake for a long time. I used to attribute high value to like material things. But I actually think a high value man is one who does not lie. Like fair enough, there are spies who need to lie, there are lawyers who need to tell or who need to keep secrets or whatnot. But for the everyday man, for the man whose profession doesn't rely on them lying, to be high values, to be sound with integrity, to be sound who does not lie. So once you start, or once you resolve to always tell the truth, you immediately become high value. Because to be of high value means you're rare. There are not many of you. So as soon as you start, or as soon as you resolve to always tell the truth, you're immediately high value. Because how many people do you know that don't lie? Even the most religious people lie every day. It's just that they will be lying and they think they're telling the truth. But they'll be lying. Because look, a lot of your problems aren't external. I'll probably say 40% of your problems are caused by the lies you tell others and the lies you tell yourself. So what if you just decided to control your mouth and stop lying? What type of man would you become? Only time will tell.